Welcome to the video. So free body diagrams. So in physics, when you get into it, especially into dynamics, when you're talking about forces, I think it's a good idea to be able to kind of picture how these forces are applied on various um, objects and situations. So I have several examples that I want to present to you. And my assumption is that you are just kind of starting okay, on forces. So you haven't necessarily done quite a lot of uh, free body diagrams. Now, I'm not a super expert okay, in free body diagrams, okay, so there's quite a lot of things to be able to go. You can make it extremely complicated, but on the physics side, especially on the introductory level, you know, you can um, do and understand quite a lot by seeing more and more examples. So here are a few of these examples for you. So I have a book basically kind of resting. You can imagine it on a table. So let's imagine that you wanted to do a free body diagram for this. So in a, in a sense of free, bio, free body diagrams, what we like to do, so we like to transform instead of actually looking at the object directly, we typically will pick. So whatever the object of interest is, so let's say this book, which is lying on the table, um, we will take a look at the book and then we will kind of draw typically some kind of a rectangle or a square. It doesn't really matter. It is just simply identifying the object of interest. So in this case, the book. And now we want to be able to understand and then draw, okay? Because uh, actual uh, forces are vectors. So we want to be able to draw, okay? In which directions the forces are applying. Um, if you know what the exact force is, so you can label the force and then you can put in the actual numerical values as well, along with the direction. But if you don't, and in free body diagrams, at least in here, I'm not interested in the numbers yet. I'm just interested in trying to draw which way the forces act. So first of all, whenever you do have an object, okay, um, gravity will be acting on it. So it's pretty much impossible not to have it, especially when you're uh, near the Earth's surface. So gravity always pulls this thing down. So what we like to do is in our free body, di body diagrams, we are going to draw, okay, the force of the gravity, okay, and it's going to be pulling this downwards. And now how you label this, you know, so in terms of, you know, writing out, so you can put F and then little G for gravity, you can certainly do it in other ways. Sometimes people will put W, which just means the weight. Okay, and that is the, the gravity which is pulling it down. That is uh, irrelevant on how you actually mark it just so that you know. And of course, if you're doing it for the teachers, you might want to be consistent with how it is being taught in that course. So I'll just label it as force of gravity, but sometimes I do label it as just W, which is going to be the weight, okay, which is the force of gravity pulling it down. Now, that's not the only force. So we're assuming that if it is on the table, it's not actually falling through the table. So something is counteracting this force of gravity, you know, making it fall towards the earth, you know, or okay, through the actual table. So the internal components of the table, we don't really think about them as much, but they're resisting. Okay. And then, you know, all the little atoms are actually trying to push this back. And what happens is, and this is uh, a little bit tricky, but you know, once you see it once or twice, hopefully it will make sense to you. Um, anytime you have a contact between one object and another object, okay? So anytime you have contact, there's always in that contact, the object is not falling through that other object. So there's going to be a force which is gonna be called the force of normal, okay? So that you have. And that particular force of normal typically counteracts, okay? What you have, and in this case, we're assuming that this book is just sitting there, it's at rest. So and these two forces are going to counteract each other so that it's not actually moving up or down okay, for this particular object. All right. And that is the force of normal. Now you will label it okay, as the force and I write an N, but sometimes a lot of people will just simply write N for the force of normal. And just a, a short little brief for you. Uh, the force of normal is always perpendicular to the surface okay, that the object is on. So that is um, actually kind of important because if you would have, you know, let's say slanted this, right? So if you had something like this, okay, and then you started to slant this like that, okay? So making it perpendicular, okay, to the actual surface. Notice that in this case, 
sort of change things for us uh, a bit because of the fact that the force of normal, so the perpendicular, would have been like this, right? Because it has to make 90 degrees. So that would have been your force of normal. But, okay, with respect to your gravity, because sometimes that is the confusion, the force of gravity is always down towards the actual Earth's surface. So although you might have, you know, on a little ramp, Okay, this is actually force of gravity would have been still pointing down, but force of normal would have been actually in this direction. Now there's uh, another force which is uh, going to be present there, okay, as long as the book is not moving, but we'll get to that in another uh, form. Here I just wanted to be able to highlight for you this force of normal and let you know that it is always, okay, perpendicular to the surface, okay, it is touching. So that would have been our free body diagram in here. So very simple. Now notice here is another okay, illustration. So let's imagine we have a box and someone is actually pulling this and you know, you maybe you have a rope. So how would we now translate this okay, into a free body diagram? So again, you know, you always draw. So this, you know, it can be certainly the box itself. You know, you can put it as a square or whatever you like. So that designates the object. It just makes it easier, right? And it's kind of at the center that we put all of these different forces that we have of that particular object. So in this case, we still would have, so the forces, okay, of gravity. So this one would still be acting. Now, of course, it might be different because of the fact that, you know, the actual box itself might be different, might be of a different mass. Now, the force of normal is still going to be here as well. So, you know, I'm going to kind of steal this as well. So this one is going to be that. And now you might say, well, so far it looks pretty much the same. And that is true, right? Okay, so if this box was just sitting there and we're not pulling it along, okay, then nothing would really happen. But, you know, if this box is actually starting to move, you know, so it's, I'm just kind of drawing these little... Okay, arrows like it seems like it's moving in this direction. So someone is actually pulling it hard enough that it starts to move. So let's assume that it is moving, right? So if it is moving, okay, to the right. So now all of a sudden what we would have is we're going to have another force. Now this particular force that we have, because there is a rope which is attached to this, okay, so this would have been the force, okay, of tension. So this is, you know, a pulling force, okay, that actually goes in that direction and it's trying to move it, okay, over here. And now you might say, okay, so this might be it. But please don't forget here, so there are actually, okay, you know, a couple of other forces. One of them we typically neglect. So if you're moving any object, now sometimes you can think about it, you know, even if you're moving fast, walking fast, or sometimes if you're running, you certainly do feel it that there is a force kind of like a drag right against you against the air resistance. So that's kind of the resistance that you have that air resistance, we typically will neglect. But you know, if your teachers want you to keep it in there, you certainly will have it. Now that air resistance is going to be actually in the opposite direction. So it's going to be something. Like so that drag, okay, so we can certainly label it. And <clears throat> You know, here, maybe I'll put a little D, okay, for the, for the drag that you have or air resistance. Sometimes you can put air. And as I said, so this one typically will be kind of neglected. Now, what will not be neglected is the fact that when you are moving this box through, so it is dragging on the actual surface. And as it drags through, there's going to be quite a bit of friction that it has to overcome. And now friction is typically resisting, okay, motion in some particular way. So in this case, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So you might have another one. Of course, this one probably will be much bigger, okay, than the than the drag, although I don't want to run out of space there. And this will be your force of friction. So that's kind of how your free body diagram would look like over here as you would be doing this, okay, with regards to the actual box, okay, and then the movement of the box. So now you can see that there's quite a lot of forces. And, you know, if you do neglect, okay, the air resistance or the drag, so this one, I mean, you can certainly remove it, okay, shift this back, and this will be a more, much more common free body diagram that you will see, okay, especially in introductory physics. So that's another one that you have here. Now let's keep, uh, you know, let's keep on cruising here. Okay, so here is a box on a ramp. So I've mentioned the book. Okay, you know, what happens 
Um, and here we're going to be assuming that we are actually, you know, having this box and it's okay being left alone and it's kind of sliding downwards over here. So, you know, what happens okay, to this box as it kind of slides down okay, the, the ramp itself. So if I wanted to do a free body diagram okay, on this, so if you wanted to do that, um, I'm going to draw you know, my box over here. Um, now, typically I would draw this and maybe I should. So I'm going to just remove this. Okay, and actually I'm going to remove this. I'm going to shift this over a little bit. Okay, and make this the free body diagram on that, okay, and then remove the ramps afterwards. So uh, in here, let's maybe change the color as well. So we know, okay, so from the first one, from the book, that you do have a normal force, which is gonna be perpendicular to whatever surface that you are dealing with. So this is gonna be the force of normal, okay, which is gonna be perpendicular to this surface because it is now on a ramp. So that's um, one thing. And that, again, is the force which basically prevents, you know, this box actually falling through this actual ramp. So there has to be something, okay, which keeps it up there. Now, the other component, okay, that you will have in here is going to be the fact that you do have the force of gravity. And this one is always pointed downwards towards the Earth. So if that surface, although you're on a ramp, it still is always down towards, okay, whatever... Um, ground or wherever ground might be. So this is going to be your force of gravity. So that's going to be downwards. And now here's the, you know, a little bit more trickier component. You know, how does this change, okay, within here? So what, what's happening as this box keep keeps on kind of sliding down? Now we're not pushing it. Notice there's no rope. There's nothing. We're just assuming that it is uh, on a slide downwards. So if that was the case, Really, the only other force that you would have, again, if I'm going to be neglecting the air resistance as it's coming down, is going to be the force of friction. So this is the, going to be the force of friction, which is in the opposite direction that you have. So that's what you have. And if it is actually indeed sliding, okay, then you'll find out that the actual component that keeps it you know, moving along, depending if it is accelerating, decelerating, or whatever it might be, is that this component of the ground Okay, there's going to be some component of this which is going to be pushing it downwards and it must be, I guess, in some way either equal okay, or greater than the force of friction. But that's for another um, the kind of lesson there. For the moment, this is the diagram that we would have. And again, so this right here, you know, you would remove and there's your free body diagram. So now you kind of know where all of the forces um, are. Now, um, if they do give you the exact angles, okay, so that obviously helps. So sometimes, you know, you might be given what this angle is, and hopefully you are given what that angle is. And then with that angle, now you can start to create, you know, your triangles, okay, over here, and then break down the component of the forces into its, you know, X and Y components so that you can carry that out. And I can put up X and Y component, kind of a review up there for you from kinematics. All right, so that is another diagram that you have. Now, here's uh, interesting because, you know, here I'm really, we're going to assume that this box is actually pushed upwards. So there is some applied force in here, okay, that you have. So this particular applied force, okay, it's like it's being pushed, okay, and being moved upwards. So how will this change, right, with regards to this diagram that we had over here? Okay, so let me remove this. How is it going to change with regards to this? Now, it shouldn't change much, right? So for instance, you know, as I kind of go through this, I'm gonna copy this, okay, and paste it downwards in here. So let's assume that now we're gonna draw the free body diagram, okay? So it's the same kind of ramp. Now, the main idea is because if you do have a force which is applied, Okay, so this particular force, okay, if it is being moved and it is kind of moving upwards, okay, so within here. So we would be labeling this in here now, typically because it's force applied in this direction. This would have been the force and you can put a little A for applied because maybe it's being pushed in this case, right? Now, you certainly can put this in the back, you know, and actually, you know, this would be really what's happening because it's getting pushed from the back. But in our free body diagrams, we typically like to kind of put these uh, forces so that you have the 
box which is central and then all of the different forces just go around okay and typically it's kind of in some way away from the actual object so although we're pushing it along which would have been fine we just simply shift it okay and we say okay that we put it right in there now this isn't it because if it is being pushed and it's applied upwards now we do have a force of friction now notice Okay, right here, the force of friction was in the opposite direction because this box was sliding down the ramp. But here it is being pushed up the ramp. And your force of friction is always kind of in the opposite direction in here. So if it is going to be in the opposite direction, we actually would put it right, right there. So it does depend on the actual movement that you have. And sometimes, you know, it's worthwhile for us, you know, to draw and let ourselves know okay which way is this thing moving so it's moving up the ramp so it has an applied force and it's overcoming the force of friction and again i'm neglecting you know any air resistances that we have so that would have been your free body diagram letting you know what forces you have on the object so here's one more okay for us and this one is just kind of like a freely falling ball all right or whatever it might be Okay, so some object which is just kind of free falling. So what would happen in free fall, which forces would we consider, all right? So in this case, what you will have is, so this particular object as you're carrying through, so what you're gonna be running into is the fact that there is a force of gravity, which is gonna be you know pulling this thing down. So just like on any other object in pretty much every single thing we've done, now, there is no normal force because um, this particular object is not against another surface, right? So it's kind of going through the air as you're going through and, you know, the air itself is basically a gas. So now what that tells us is if you're going to ignore, okay, or neglect air resistance, then there really isn't any other force. If you're going to include air resistance, which certainly does happen as the object keeps falling, because you may remember gravity accelerates it at 9.8 meters per second uh, squared, but that is on the assumption that it, there's no air resistance. Well, eventually, you know, as you're going through, you're going to learn that the particles that are in the air are actually resisting. And the faster you kind of are moving along, eventually there's more and more particles you hit and the air has a certain density so there's a certain amount of these air particles which eventually you know are going to kind of slow this kind of object falling down and it's going to reach something which we call okay um a terminal velocity which is the maximum velocity based on an object of how quickly it can fall at least near an earth's surface so Okay, that being said, you may not care about all of these details, but you might care about is, you know, trying to draw a proper diagram. Okay, sorry, this should be, you know, vertically downwards. Okay, so if you're going to be drawing this out and you do consider, you know, your air resistance right there, you would have drawn, drew it in this way. There's nothing in the horizontal. It's just simply assuming that we're just falling in the vertical. Um, so that typically is the case, right? So that's what you have. You have now taken on uh, a few examples of these free body diagrams, and I hope that it gives you some kind of a context. And I'll try to actually, you know, search up and, and put in the description, um, maybe, you know, a link or two that will give you some more examples if you wanted to see. But this is the main goal, okay, of this video, is to give you several examples of how to draw these free body diagrams. So the key thing is, please remember, you know, the object, you can draw it as a square, as a rectangle, or as a ball, okay? You can make it as realistic as you want, okay? Um, but typically, you know, a, a box is good enough, okay? Then you want to be able to actually identify all the different forces. You want to be able to identify which directions they're acting. And the more of these body diagrams you do, okay, the better you're going to get at it. Okay, so that's that. And then you basically start to put in the directions, okay, and draw it out on your free body diagram. And then once you get to problems, you can certainly put the numbers in and then start working out, okay, um, anything that you want to find out. But that's in future videos. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you, okay, hopefully in a future video. Bye, everybody.